Hi everyone, this is Eunice Leung. Um, some students call me Fon Leung. So for this video today, we are going to be learning regarding Newton's second law of motion. Um, and before I actually start explaining about Newton's second law of motion, I'm playing around with the video filter, so just ignore my facial expression and the filter around me. Yeah? Okay, so um, let's go into Newton's second law. Okay, so Newton's second law of motion, we're going to define the forces uh, and also Newton's second law of motion. And But most of the time, students don't really understand uh, what is Newton's second law of motion is trying to say. So we're going to go into it one by one. So let's start with the first one. Okay, how can we actually make an object accelerate? All right, how are we going to make an object move? Okay, so that is very important. So look around you, the objects around you, and have a look at it. How are we going to move an object? If we exert a force, if we push, let's just say if we push the, the pens around you, you would notice that it will be able to move. But the question is, how can we make it accelerate? Alright, so we're going to be focusing more on how are we going to accelerate a, uh, an object first. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, we're going to be playing with a uh, simulation for today. Okay, so uh, we're going to, uh, in this particular simulation, all right, I'm using the FAT simulation of uh, uh, basic motion, all right, under the tab of acceleration. So in this particular case, all right, we're going to select all the options on the right of the side of the friction. Okay, um, in state of explaining, I'm going to go into the uh, simulation right now. So let's see, I'm going to pick acceleration. Alright, so over here we are going to be going to select all these choices on the right hand side here. Alright, and I'm going to simplify uh, the whole entire simulation by making it no friction. Okay, so when there's no friction, what we're going to observe here is that we are going to try to accelerate this particular crate. Okay, some students will say, okay, I will be able to accelerate an object if I were to give it a sudden push. All right, so I'm going to try to give this particular crate a sudden push. And how are you going to see the acceleration is by looking at this particular area, this bar here. If there is an acceleration, the acceleration will have value. All right, but if it drops, it means that it's not having any value. So I'm going to give it a sudden push and I let it go. I give it a sudden push. The crate is actually set in motion. All right, and the speed, as we can see over here, is 7.2 meter per second. But the acceleration value is goes to 0 meter per second squared. So this actually means that um, the object, when we give a sudden push onto the crate, it actually causes the object to start moving. All right, but once that force is being released, it's back to zero acceleration, but it's still moving with a constant speed. So that is actually Newton's first law of motion. It will continue on in motion unless there's an external force onto it. But the main thing here is we want to make this particular crate accelerate. So how am I going to make this crate accelerate? So I'm going to click on this button here. And as you can see, when I click this particular button, the applied force here becomes 50 Newton. I'm going to pause this first. So the applied force is 50 Newton. The sum of the forces pointing towards the right hand side is also 50 Newton. And there's an acceleration value constant at 1 meter per second. All right. And obviously, if I click play, the speed value continues to go up because it's accelerating. So if I exert even more force onto it, the acceleration becomes 2 meters per second square. The speed keeps increasing. I'm going to pause that. So when, it, when, I, um, when I applied force constantly, all right, I keep applying force onto the crate, only then it will have an acceleration value. All right, the speed will keep increasing. But if that speed is being removed, let me remove that speed, the, it will notice that the acceleration value now goes back to zero and the speed becomes constant at 33.4 meter per second. All right, so what can you actually say regarding this particular simulation? Okay, what can you talk about this particular simulation? So in order to make an object accelerate, the object accelerates because there's a net force acting on its direction of motion. All right. So when there is a sum of forces pushing towards the right, the crate will accelerate towards the right. When the force is being removed, the crate is no longer accelerating, but it is actually moving with constant velocity. 
All right, so that is actually how we make an object accelerate. So that actually goes to Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states, acceleration of a body is directly proportionate to the net force acting on it, and is inversely proportionate to its mass. Alright, so from the formula you can see, acceleration is directly proportionate to the net force. Please be alert on one thing, it's the net force acting on the object, not just force. Because by stating just force, it means that it is only one force acting on the object but it's not the case all right because you need a net force acting on the object okay and then the acceleration is also inversely proportionate with the mass of the object so by this particular formula acceleration is directly proportionate to the net force divided by the mass so the normal equation is f net equals to ma it is not what students always memorize at as f equals to ma F equals to MA means force equals to the mass times acceleration, whereby the actual Newton's second law of motion is actually the net force equals to MA. The sum of the forces acting on the object is equals to the mass times its acceleration. But one thing again, many students uh, actually just keep accepting. But how many of you actually agrees and believe that Newton's second law of motion. All right. So in this particular uh, video, I we are going to do a small experiment. We're going to do two experiments. Okay. We're going to prove Newton's second law of motion. All right. So we're going to be proving the first part of Newton's second law of motion right now. That is between the net force and also the acceleration. We're going to make the crate actually move due to a net force acting on it. We're going to accelerate it. So over here, this particular uh, mini experiments via the online simulation, we're going to have a manipulated variable, which is going to be the net forces or the sum of the forces. Our responding variable is going to be the acceleration and our constant variable will be the mass. So we we're not, we not going to change the mass of the value, but we're going to change the net force and we're going to take down the recordings for acceleration. So over here, we could, later we're going to sketch a graph to see what is the relationship and make sure that you tabulate the data. Um, so I'm going to be using Excel to actually show my data and also to show my graph. So let's get down to the simulation. All right, so I have my table uh, data of the table ready. So over here, what we're going to do is I'm going to reduce the friction because in real life, we definitely have frictional force. All right, so I'm going to uh, select on some of the forces. I want to know the values. All right, uh, the masses, we, are, we don't really bother, but just to show everyone, the mass of the crate is going to be 50 kg. And we're going to just select acceleration because that's what we want. Okay, so um, we I, I'm not selecting the speed because uh, I don't want to confuse any student. We just want to look at the sum of the forces and also the value of the acceleration. So how are we going to manipulate the forces? So if you over here, if you notice, I'm going to click on this forward button, this double forward arrow. So when I click this, it's going to increase the force by 50, 100, 150, 200, so on and so forth. Okay, so that way it's going to be constant, but let me show you the first one. When I click 50 Newton, all right, because the frictional force is also 50 Newton, the applied force is also 50 Newton, therefore the sum of the forces is 0. 50 minus 50, it's going to be 0. So my sum of forces becomes 0, my acceleration is not moving because there's no, force cause, uh, there's no net force causing it to move. So I'm going to increase my applied force right now. All right, when I increase my applied force and it starts moving, I'm going to press on uh, pause. Um, so the applied force is 100 Newton, the frictional force is 45, so the net forces or the sum of the forces is 55 Newton, and the acceleration of the crate is 1.10 meter per second square. So that's what I'm going to write down into my Excel. The sum of the forces is 55, the acceleration is 1.10, and then I hit, okay, I am a little bit particular regarding my data, so I'm going to increase the number by one zero okay so then after that I'm going to click play increase my force pause again so why do I have to click play and then pause is because I need the simulation to run the acceleration all right so now my sum of the forces is 105 which is actually 150 
minus by 45. So sum of forces now is 105. My acceleration is 2.10. Okay. Again, my numbering. And then I hit play, increase my force, pause it again. I have my sum of the forces right now is 155. My acceleration is 3.10. Okay, again, hit play, increase the force, click pause. Uh, so now my sum of the force is 205. Acceleration is 4.10. My last value, play, increase, pause. So right now, my sum of the forces is 255. Acceleration value is 5.10. Okay, I have my data over there already. So let's, uh, before I actually plot out the graph, you must be wondering, why do I hit play, increase the force, and then I pause it back? Because if I actually continue on play without hitting the force, that particular object that pushes the crate will actually lose contact with the crate and it will actually cause the applied force to go to zero and it will start to decelerate, right? Because there's no longer net force making it move in front. So that's the reason why I keep pressing the pause button, okay? So um, let's stop the simulation and refresh that first and let's now focus on my Excel, okay? Let's focus on my Excel right now. So I'm going to be uh, plotting a graph. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go to Insert and Recommended Graph. And for the Excel to help me to plot my graph. So Excel directly helped me to plot my graph. And as you can see, the force, sum of the forces here is actually the x-axis. And my acceleration is the y-axis. So as from the graph, we can see that the net forces is directly proportionate to the sum of the for, uh, to the acceleration. So this actually proves the first part of Newton's second law to be correct. All right, so this actually proved my Newton's second law first part to be correct. So from the experiment, all right, what can you say about the acceleration and the sum of the forces? All right, from the experiment, we actually found that it is actually acceleration directly proportionate to the sum of the forces. Okay, so that proves the first part of Newton's second law. All right, so we're going to go and prove Newton's second law of motion second part, which is mass is inversely proportionate to the acceleration. So in this particular case, I am going to, uh, our manipulated variable is going to be the mass, uh, responding variable is going to be the acceleration, and the constant variable is going to be the applied force. Now, because the applied force, I want it to be constant to be the same, so that the sum of the forces acting on the object is the same, I'm going to make the friction to zero, so that I don't have to minus out the friction value or else the the sum of the forces will change all right then we're going to tabulate the data into the excel once again and then use the excel to actually draw the graph all right so let's go to the simulation all right so we're going to click on some of the forces i want to know the value the masses i we don't need to know the speed we just go to acceleration then i'm going to slide this glider all the way to none and you will see that the track now becomes ice so it means that there's no friction so i'm going to uh, how we're going to manipulate the mass is by putting uh maybe add the girl up on the crate and then that is how we add the for, uh, mass up so i'm going to just put the girl on top because the girl is the lowest mass value right now i'm going to pause it first remember because if i don't pause it the uh, applied force is going to directly apply onto the girl and there's no friction so that particular object is going to fly off very very fast so i'm going to apply the force all the way to 300 newton all right uh, very quickly i'm going to click play to let the simulation run the acceleration and I'm going to pause immediately. So you see, when I put the friction to none, the applied force and the sum of the forces is the same. But if I have friction value, the sum of the forces would be less. And every single time I change the mass, it will actually affect the sum of the forces. So uh, we want the sum of the forces to be constant. Therefore, I'm making the friction to be zero. Okay, so I'm going to start my experiment right now. I'm going to click play and pause immediately. All right, so right now, let me record that down. All right, my mass value here is uh, 40 kg. 
my acceleration is 7.50. Okay, let me make my visual slightly better. My acceleration, because the data shown is actually two decimal places, so I'm going to make my value to be two decimal places as well. Okay, now next is I'm going to take the girl down and I'm going to increase to put 50 kg and again making the force, some of the forces to be 300 Newton. So my data is 50 kg, hitting play and pause very quickly. And you see, I have my acceleration value to be 6.00. Okay, then I'm going to put a girl uh, on top. Okay, I'm going to increase it slowly, 80 kg. So again, 300 Newton. Hit play and pause. So right now, 80 kg man, the acceleration with a 300 Newton sum of the forces, this acceleration is 3.75. Okay, then next let's see, I can put the mass right now to be 90 kg. It's up to you how much you want to get uh, to put the mass. Okay, I'll send the link of this particular simulation down at the description. You can play around with the simulation if you want. All right, I always share out the simulation. So again, once again, putting the sum of the forces 300 Newton, hit play and pause immediately. So that's 90 kg acceleration to be 3.33. And last one, so last one is going to be 100 kg. So I'm going to put another crate up there. Again, play and pause. So I have my acceleration value. So 100 kg, my acceleration is 3.00. Alright, so that is my data. So right now, we are going to... Alright. Okay, so right now we're going to go into plotting our graph, right? So again, I'm going to highlight my data. I'm going to insert recommended chart and I'm going to put a chart over there. All right, as you can see, my, my mass versus acceleration graph and you can see the curve. All right, the curve of this particular graph is actually an inversely proportionate curve. All right, it's not a direct linear decreasing curve. All right, it's an inversely proportionate curve. So what does this curve actually mean? Okay, so let's get back to our slideshow. Okay, so from the second experiment, from our data and our graph, what can we say about the acceleration and the mass? So from this particular graph, we can actually see that the mass is inversely proportionate to the acceleration. So this actually obeys back to our Newton's second law of motion, whereby acceleration is directly proportionate to the net force or the sum of the forces, and acceleration is inversely proportionate to the mass. As the mass increases, the acceleration decreases. So rearranging this particular relationship, we will get F net equals to M A. Please remember uh, this particular formula that my my uh, cartoon is actually pointing F equals to M A is definitely wrong because it's supposed to be net force equals to M A. All right. So um, that is all that I want to share regarding Newton's second law of motion. I hope that with this particular mini simulation and experiment, you guys will have uh, you have already believed that Newton's second law, whereby acceleration is directly proportionate to the net force and it is inversely proportionate to the mass. So um, awaiting for the next video, which is regarding how to solve problems regarding uh, Newton's second law of motion. So till the next particular simulation, all right. So till the next particular simulation, I hope that you have learned uh, quite some stuff regarding Newton's second law of motion right now. And uh, if you have any questions for me, you can actually drop me a message. Or and if you like this video, please remember to click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for my video today. See you then. Bye.